and welcome to California Bountiful. I'm your host, Aubrey Aquino. I am at Castello de Omarosa, a beautiful Napa Valley wine estate known for their Italian grapes. But that's not what this segment's about. It's about a slick byproduct of the grape seed. Check it out. It's a picturesque scene in Calistoga, a medieval-style Tuscan castle winery with charming farm animals wandering the property and breathtaking views from every angle. But naturally, the main attraction here are the grapes. We are a winery that makes around 30, 40,000 cases of wine, a lot of Italian varieties. But beyond the wine, George Salzner knows his grapes are far more sustainable. It all started out in Austria where I was growing up and we were actually using grapes at all already 30, 40 years ago. It is a very sustainable product and it is a leftover product. After we clean the tanks, we take out the seeds and they are leftover product. So it's great. Enter Salute Sante. The seed is exposed to the fermentation. For more than 30 years, Salute Sante has been pioneering grapeseed oil, innovating a cold press approach. What's amazing is that most people don't realize that we actually have oil coming from the fruit. So it's actually a fruit oil. And we don't use any land. It's already grown on the grapevine. So really there's no need for extra water, no extra land, no extra fertilizer. And it's 100% upcycled from something that exists. The wine industry really throws away their price cake, the pump is after the harvest. Grapeseed oil is a relatively new industry for California. And it wasn't until 2010 that Valentin and his wife were able to achieve their goal of developing a cold press for the grape seeds. There's one benefit we have here in Napa, California we can actually press an oil that is extra virgin cold pressed, Ooh. totally unfiltered and unrefined. So it's like the highest level and the highest quality. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we can pull this string together. We have here, these are Chardonnay seeds and which is actually producing my favorite oil. So we have uh, the machine developed in a way where it conveys the seed into a chamber at the very end where it gets to a point where it's basically a dead end and a very small hole. And so the seed has to crush against that dead end and it has to go through that hole. And by that point, we create about 8,000 pounds of pressure. But it has to be done in a way where we don't have too much heat because then it's not a cold pressed oil. So it's a fine balance of speed, pressure. So what comes out on the other end is basically an oil one drop at a time. I would almost call it, it's still wild. Whoa. And don't be shy. It's wild. Yeah. I'm gonna lick it, smell it. Get those aromas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's warm. It's warm, right? That's good. The oil itself, we filled it into our Salute Sante brand. Small bottles and we take it sometimes a single variety, Chardonnay grapeseed oil, Merlot grapeseed oil, Cabernet Sauvignon grapeseed oil. Salute Sante has also been chosen for Oprah's favorite things list, not once, not twice, but three times. They've been awarded a Sophie, which is like an Oscar in the food industry. Plus, this oil is highly coveted among top chefs. And the finishing touch, we use Morimoto grapeseed oil. We work with Chef Morimoto. He actually came here in Napa, opened a restaurant in 2010, and we were his customer from day one. He said, can you make one for me too? And he created his own label, and we um, made a special white grapeseed oil for him and a special red grapeseed oil for him. It completes the cycle of the grape. So there's no other food manufacturing facility or process or method that I know that has a complete cycle. So we are zero waste food. I'm registered dietitian Ashley Hawk, and if you're looking for a way to add a boost of nutrition and flavor to your diet, then the small but mighty chickpea might just be the answer. I love the fact that in every serving of chickpeas, you're going to be getting roughly seven grams of plant-based protein. On top of that, you're getting four grams of fiber and it's gonna clock in at roughly 120 calories. They're so easy to enjoy. You just rinse them out of the can and then you can add them on top of a salad or blend them in with a soup. I also love to make my own hummus or dips. 
This one here is just half a cup of chickpeas with half a cup of peas, blend up with a little bit of olive oil. This goes great on top of crackers or a toast. It also comes in its own flour, so you can use it to stir in your favorite ingredients and make chickpea cookies. For more nutrition tips and tricks, you can go to ashleyhawkrd.com or follow along the fun at ashleyhawkrd on Instagram. Coming up later in the show, we'll get cooking just for the halibut. But first, food-focused, summer-dry California gardens are cropping up. California Bountiful is brought to you by the California Farm Bureau. Did you know Nationwide is so much more than a great insurance company? They're one of America's largest financial services companies, too. Just like I'm so much more than quarterback Peyton Manning. I'm also Peyton Manning. It's lovely, Peyton. Did you say uh, Peyton or Peyton? Peyton. 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 <laughs> Payton. Great work. Thank you. For your insurance and financial needs, Payton. Nationwide is on your side. Meet us in Monterey, where we're stronger together. From golf and pebble beach to a night at the rodeo, for mechanical bull riding, country dancing, and plenty of cowboy fun. The California Farm Bureau's annual meeting and YFNR state conference also features educational workshops, awards, and networking. Register now and join us this December 7th to 10th. You don't want to miss it. Visit cfbf.com slash annual meeting today. Bigger than ever, California Bountiful Magazine's special edition is coming out on October 1st, jam-packed with 64 pages of holiday inspiration, from gift ideas to mouth-watering recipes, plus insights from California farmers, gardening tips, and more. For just $9.99, get a one-year subscription, or save 25% on a two-year subscription, and get exclusive access to both print and digital content. Visit CaliforniaBountiful.com to subscribe today. Have you ever heard of an agri-hood? What about a farm park? Well, these concepts are trending and they're helping foster community too. Let's find out how it works. A farm park could be something like some raised beds in the center of a community that people lease or that we assist them with. But something like this where it's row crops in soil and this farm is a quarter acre. We're starting to get into some degrees of acreage. We call these agri-hoods. We are at the core agri-hood in Santa Clara, California. This is the first agri-hood development in Silicon Valley. And that means that we have a farm as the centerpiece of a community instead of a pool or a gym. This affordable housing community has as the front yard a working organic farm. Laura Hermanson is the visionary behind Farmscape. In a lot of our communities, they used to be farmland that got swallowed up by the suburbs. So it's nice to bring back a little bit of that agricultural heritage to these new development projects. This property in particular used to be UC Extension farmland that they would use as experimental place where they could grow certain types of fruit trees and things like that. So it was important for the community to maintain a portion of this space as agriculture in perpetuity. It's a farm in the middle of the city. We are across the street from a tire shop and a huge mall and a whole bunch of other things. The Winchester Mystery House is right down the street. We are in the beating heart of the Silicon Valley region. But what this used to be called was the Valley of Hearts Delight. Santa Clara was known as an agricultural capital and a huge orchard space. And that's why when we designed this space, we did put so many fruit trees espaliered around the edge of this farm itself. And many of the fruit trees tie back to that agricultural heritage, specifically in Santa Clara. It's a lifestyle that's seeing an uptick as communities recognize the role that food and farms play in fostering community. Farmscape maintains 15 agri-hoods across the state. Far south, we do the Rancho Mission Viejo agri-hoods in Orange County, and we work all the way out to Tracy, California, where we have a new project going in that's for seniors. And we also have projects in Fremont, California as well. What's unique about Farmscape is we are a landscape architecture company. We are landscape contractors. And then we also do farming and programming. 
I started working on this project in 2015 when it was still on the boards, and I worked with the team to design it to be able to make sure it'd be thriving the way it is today. We're also open to having residents from the community come out and volunteer with us as well. And what's harvested from the on-site farm goes directly to the residents. The seniors here love having organic, beautiful food. Something really special is our farmer who is here on site, Welling Tom. Welling has been growing in Brentwood at his family farm for way longer than he'd like me to admit, growing for top restaurants in California. He's grown for Michelin starred chefs, and now he's bringing that same attention and quality to the food that goes to our seniors here free of charge. Let's see, we got these tomatoes, we got eggplants, peppers, basil, green beans, summer squash, zucchini, cucumbers. A few residents have put in requests or informally what they might like to have. Like one gentleman asked for tomatillos, which I wasn't originally planning on, but I thought that was a good idea since somebody you know, bothered to ask for it, so I, I got a few plants. Plus, it's a perfect opportunity for this farmer to share his passion and soil smarts for cultivating the land. I've always enjoyed growing things and sharing that with people who, you know, also have that interest, you know, whether they have the experience or not. And I realized there's a lot more people, so many generations who've been pretty far removed from the whole experience of growing food, but a lot of people are interested. It seems to be more and more. So I'd like to share that. And I think it's just a very uh, peaceful way of working, living, gets people connected, you know, back to the earth. Another big piece at the heart of these agrihood communities is sustainability. I think the sustainability piece is huge at agrihoods. We're already using low water no matter what because we water them all with drip irrigation. So it's more water friendly than a lawn, for instance. It's also about the same amount of money to upkeep. So something that's really unique about this property is the fact that it is all watered by rainwater. So the farm, everything here is grown with rainwater that's collected from the roofs of the shed and the senior building, as well as what will be co collected by future buildings, run off from the streets and it's all filtered underground and then fills up that water tower behind us. So we're able to water this all with recycled rainwater, keeping our water usage at nothing from uh, the city of Santa Clara. I think people are getting hip to the fact that you need to pay for landscaping at these communities anyway. It's not much more to put in an orchard or to put in a farm so that you can actually benefit from your landscaping. Hi, I'm Leslie Dabney, the Vineyard Mom. Our farmer's markets are filled with fresh fall vegetables, and today I'm gonna to share with you a Brussels sprout recipe, but with a twist. First, I take these beautiful Brussels sprouts, I cut them in half. I also added a sliced shallot. I covered it with some extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper, and I roasted it for about 20 minutes. When they come out of the oven, I'm gonna add these to a mixing bowl. We're gonna add even more flavor to this recipe. First, I'm gonna to add to this some beautiful pomegranate seeds. Next, we have some pine nuts. I love the crunch of the nuts with this beautiful dish. And for some additional creamy flavor, I have some crumbled goat cheese. I'm gonna to add to it, and I'm gonna combine all of this together. Now, we're not done. I'm gonna to top this with a beautiful balsamic glaze. That's gonna add so much flavor to this already beautiful dish. Now, this dish is perfect to have with any type of meat that you like. I love to have it with some delicious chicken or even some turkey. And to go with this beautiful recipe, I'm gonna go ahead and choose two wines. The first is a Chardonnay with a nice, beautiful, creamy texture. The second one I have is a Sauvignon Blanc. This is a much lighter wine with a crisp flavor. Either one of these wines will pair perfectly with this beautiful meal. For all of my food and wine pairings, just go to at the Vineyard Mom Living on Instagram. Cheers. Still to come, deep fried golden goodness with Bay Area flavor. And up next, we head into the city for some fresh fish. Stay with us. Did you know Nationwide is so much more than a great insurance company? 
They're one of America's largest financial services companies, too. Just like I'm so much more than quarterback Peyton Manning. I'm also Peyton Manning. It's lovely, Peyton. Did you say uh, Peyton or Peyton? Peyton. 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 <laughs> Peyton. Great work. Thank you. For your insurance and financial needs, Peyton, Nationwide is on your side. California Farm Bureau's all-new podcast, Voice of California Agriculture, is streaming now. Tune in for the latest farm and food news, legislative updates, and more. Listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also visit cfbf.com to access the podcast links. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Discover more California Bountiful and get social with us. See the stories we're working on and get a peek behind the scenes. Plus, more recipes and fun facts and join other like-minded foodies and fans of California's Bounty. Find, follow, and talk to us at CA Bountiful. Here in San Francisco, Foliage is ushering in a new dining concept led by a chef with connections to local purveyors and farming in the region. We're at Foliage here in San Francisco, bottom of Bernal Heights. You can expect to find local and sustainable menu, uh, a bit funky fresh with California cuisine. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona, and then raised in Salinas, California for most of my life and didn't move till just recently um, when we opened this place up, right? Um, so the thing that got me started with cooking was my grandmothers. Both my grandmothers were really good cooks. Um, and I got to more of a grandma's boy, so I'd stick to them. You know, kind of growing up, you know, knowing farm workers, knowing, you know, the seasons, because you see the seasons change around you, you know the smell of broccoli in the air when it's right before harvest. You know, so there's fields all around us, so it's something that we've all, all come to know. It's pretty readily available to get some pretty good produce there, you know, going to the local far farmers markets, things of that nature. But also my family worked in the field as well. So we would also get a lot of produce gifted to us. We would cook with whatever was brought to us. Salinas is where my grandmother lives. She would make all kinds of stuff. And it was crazy because she's a uh, type of woman who can, can create a feast out of a pot, which I thought was insane. Cooking a lavish meal in one pot, maybe two, but it would feed you know the family of 14 that we had. Because at the time, you know, the whole family was living together. Yeah, that definitely influenced me. I didn't realize that she had such an impact on me getting into this career. There's something really unique about the flavors that I grew up with, and I like to incorporate them no matter what I'm doing, whether it's, you know, uh, European, Asian, any, anything like that. I like to use those same flavors because they mean something to me. Uh, today we're gonna make a halibut crudo with agua chile. Uh, so I have a leche de tigre that has a lot of uh, allium, a lot of cilantro, um, and a little bit of jalapeno. Hi, I'm Mo, executive chef at Foliage. We'll be making halibut crudo. First, we're gonna fabricate a local halibut. So first, we're gonna take the collar. So we can take the head off. And now we will run knife down the middle. We have our fillet. All right, now we're gonna remove the fish from the skin. It's pretty light. Texturally, it's pretty soft. The fat content isn't too high, which makes it pretty light and refreshing. Now we're gonna cure it. Uh, this will allow it to firm up. It'll also add salinity to the fish, so you don't have to add it on. So I like to cure with salt and a little bit of sugar. Sugar will add a little bit of sweetness. Leave it too long, it gets goopy. Right, and then you leave it 10 minutes. Uh, if you have a bigger piece, it would go longer, right? So it could penetrate. Um, but yeah, we leave it, leave it for 10 minutes, it'll be ready to slice. We'll slice down the middle, 
just because this line is pretty big. So now we're gonna plate the agua chile. So we just lay it out, fan it out a little bit, make it look nice. Then we go around with the leche de tigre. Leche de tigre is the sauce of ceviche. It's, it's you know, that real acidic, fishy, spicy sauce. Then we're gonna go around with some roasted shallot oil. Uh, offers a little bit of nuttiness for it. Got some pickled shallots, some French breakfast radish, and then finally some micro cilantro. This is halibut aguachile. Now, your Bountiful Landscapes. Hi, California Bountiful flower fans. October and November is a great time to plant rootstock for Bountiful blooms that will arrive in early spring. In particular, ranunculus, anemones, sweet peas, and peonies. Here at our microflower farm, we start our pre-sprouting process with our ranunculus and anemones in late October, November. And then we follow with a second batch in January. This ensures that we have a flow of blooms from March through May. Sweet peas love the cool weather and germinate readily in fall, setting their roots down and taking off in early spring for an amazing crop of scented frilly blooms. Now is also a great time to get bare root peonies into the ground. Peonies perform best when planted shallow with about an inch of soil over their eyes or sprouts. Thanks for watching, California. I'm Charmaine Turbo, head farmette here at Turbo Farms in Los Altos. To learn more about growing cut flowers and life at our micro flower farm, find us at turbofarms.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just ahead, it's a lumpia lover's paradise. See how the lumpia company rolls. Did you know Nationwide is so much more than a great insurance company? They're one of America's largest financial services companies too. Just like I'm so much more than quarterback Peyton Manning. I'm also Peyton Manning. It's lovely, Peyton. Did you say uh, Peyton or Peyton? Peyton. 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 <laughs> Peyton. Great work. Thank you. For your insurance and financial needs, Peyton, Nationwide is on your side. The California Farm Bureau has protected the diverse agricultural interests in the Golden State for over a century. As part of the California Farm Bureau, you'll add your voice to the combined strength of over 34,000 farmers, ranchers, and families through our state. That means more connections, more influence, and more opportunity to fight for the issues that impact your life. With your support behind us, California Farm Bureau's robust government affairs, federal policy and farm pact, and legal teams work tirelessly to advocate at all levels of government, protecting and promoting our shared way of life. Together, California Farm Bureau and our members are standing up for farmers, ranchers, and families throughout the Golden State every day, working to cultivate a bountiful future for all Californians. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm here in Oakland's Brooklyn Basin neighborhood at the Lumpia Company, where they're known for frying up this well-loved Filipino finger food, but they're adding their own California twist. Let's check it out. This is Lumpia and Brew, my brand new flagship restaurant by the Lumpia Company. We're here in Brooklyn Basin, the heart of Oakland, California, on the Oakland waterfront. So Lumpia and Brew is just my dream location. It's the restaurant that I want to be at every day. There's video games, there's beer. You know, my goal and mission has always been to share uh, that Filipino love and joy through Lumpia all around the world. It's here in Oakland, has everything that I love and what I want to share with the world. I'm Alex Lumpia Chef Rototo, and this is the Lumpia Company. Well, growing up as a Filipino American, you know, uh, you get to meet different cultures here in California, so we're so diverse. The funny thing, everybody calls it an egg roll, and that's technically incorrect. It's a spring roll. It has no egg in it. It's, it's a flour wrapper. It's like a pastry. So if you want to be technically correct, it's a Filipino spring roll, deep fried. It's just so good, like deep fried, crispy, dip it in sauce. We can eat a million of them. Hey guys, nice bisque and egg with java rice. Oh, oh, yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. 
This is the, the Lumpia lab right here. So how many of these are they wrapping up every day? We do about a, a little over a thousand a day with a team of three right here. So this one's my one of my favorites. It's the TLC veggie, so it's a little different from your traditional cabbage and carrots and onions and garlic. This is a oven roasted mushroom, potato, and garlic and with chopped kale. So it has all of that California love in it. They look like 90% perfect. You know, you don't want them 100% perfect or else that's like the machine stuff. So these have character in them and look at how beautiful they stack up. So all the Libyas are hand rolled. Handcrafted all day, every day. In the Bay Area's melting pot of cultures, traditional ethnic foods like Filipino lumpia have quickly emerged as American favorites for local foodies. The street food was abundant and I wanted to put that love into the lumpia, like the bacon cheeseburger lumpia, like the peach mango cobbler lumpia, even for the kids, pepperoni pizza lumpia. And I brought it to the San Francisco Giants ballpark you got Filipino uncles running around there wearing Giants hats. You got all cultures there. I knew that we, you know, if we got into the park, this would take us to the next level. From their hot spot at Oracle Park to this flagship restaurant in the East Bay, the menu has grown too. Started off just doing lumpias, and then the business got bigger. Then we had to just put our own twist on some Filipino classics, like chicken wings. We like fried chicken wings, and we toss it in like adobo. Uh, dry seasoning. It gives you that sweet and savory flavor to it. And then we have the traditional barbecue skewers. Chicken on a skewer grilled with served with rice and vinegar. And then we also have drinks, calamansi. That's like our citrus. Uh, if a mandarin and a lime had a baby, that would be our limeade. We have Filipino ice creams like ube, mango. The Lumpia chef also teamed up with Bay Area hip hop figure E40, who became an investor and co-owner of the Lumpia company. We put the W in to replace the R, and together E40, the Lumpia Chef, rapping the best Lumpias, and that means best rappers alive. Some of the people that love Lumpia are not Filipino. It's people that grew up around Filipino households. Some cultures like deep fried greatness, deep fried love, and I think everybody pretty much does, and if you don't, you're just lying through your teeth. Number two, number two, your order's ready. Number two, come and get it. I'm good at creating fun experiences that, that's inspired by Filipino culture, but that can be enjoyed and loved by everybody, especially California folks. So much lumpia, so little time. That is gonna do it for this edition of California Bountiful. I'm your host, Aubrey Aquino. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can always find us online at californiabountiful.com. Until next time, take care.